Hello, and welcome to the tv and T podcast. I'm Adriana. And I'm Selena. And we are two sisters that have decided to let the internet into the conversations that we have about TV and pop culture over endless cups of tea. In our house, the reoccurring questions are, is it tea time? To which the answer is always yes. yes. And what are we watching? So pour yourself a cup and get ready to get into it. Hey guys! <laughs> hello, hello everybody! Welcome back! Welcome back to the pod, another episode of the tv and podcast. Yes, we are back and better than ever after a good week. I yes. think it was a good week for me. Yeah, I'm in a great mood. Um, even though the world is a little sad right now, I'm in a great mood. <laughs> yeah, I know. My quote is kind of happy, kind of hopeful, but... I will admit it does seem a little out of place with everything that's going on in America. In America. In America. <laughs> America's yeah. ooh loud. Mm-hmm. Uh yeah. So catch us up. Tell us. Tell me how you feeling. What what's what's the mood? Set it off. So my quote for this week, you guys, comes from Baz Luhrmann's adaptation of The Great Gatsby. Love it. The only adaptation that matters. <laughs> it <laughs> reads. And so with the sunshine and the great bursts of leaves growing on the trees, just as things grow in fast movies, I had that familiar conviction that life was beginning over again with summer. Oh, I love that! Right? Oh, I love that so much! Yeah, and this is a quote that also comes directly from the book, which I love that book. Mm -hmm. Fitzgerald is one of my favorite writers. So that's just the mood. That's how I'm feeling. I'm feeling hopeful. I'm feeling like fun and fresh summer. It's getting warmer down here in Miami. Um, so hot. Oh my yeah. god. <laughs> Although it is super rainy as well. Hurricane season decided to come early. This is true. But other than that, I'm feeling good. Oh, I love that. Right? Yeah. Isn't it cute? It is very cute. <laughs> oh. Um, my quote comes from Jay Wow from the Jersey Shore. <laughs> okay, that's a departure. <laughs> And um, it's from the latest season of Jersey Shore Family Vacation. And she says, I need a vacation from this vacation. Mm. And that is just exactly my mood this week. I was just feeling like I needed to be at a resort. I needed to be laying by a pool looking out at the ocean. I needed a rum and coke in my hand. I needed a taco and a slice of pizza and (laughs) french fries and tacos in front of me. You've been (laughs) talking about your vacay mood. Like Like, I just want to, I want to live resort life right now. I'm just, I'm missing it. I want to be on a vacation. I just, I want that like cute beach dress like <laughs> eat all day get drunk yeah nap by the pool wake up shower go down to the buffet and like i just don't know when that's ever gonna happen again because of corona and yeah. just just overall ickiness like i don't even want to be around <laughs> all the people that yeah. require to be at a resort but i just i want that life I feel like that's what the vacate to the vacation house should have been, but it was just raining the entire time, and I feel like we're in a very lazy mood. Like, quarantine has gotten to us. Yeah. We've I, become couch potatoes. I do feel like a couch potato. Yeah. Like, you didn't get dressed any of the days. I got dressed, like, at least once. Yeah. I was just, like, not feeling it. I was <laughs> like, this weather is just, like, ugh, bombing me out. Yeah. Anyways, um, so yeah, but I like your quote, and I think my quote goes hand in hand in that, because, you know, summer's here, and I just, I, I want a vacation. <laughs> yeah, me too. I feel like I need to buy vacation clothes once again. You guys know my shopping problem, but, like, yes. I have nowhere to go. I might just buy it anyway. We'll see. I'll let you know. You know what's so funny? Last week, I read a book about min- minimalism, and mm-hmm. now I'm going to go through my closet this weekend and just throw it all away. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny? I actually cleaned out my closet last week. Mm. I got rid of a bunch of shoes. I got rid of some clothes because y'all should know this rule. If you haven't worn it in six months, check it. Yeah. Make room for new stuff. Um, But that minimalism vibe, I don't know. I'm just, I'm, that's the vibe I'm on. I just want to like simplify and just streamline and I just want to feel, I guess what has happened in quarantine is that I feel like so my mood gets thrown off so easily and 
that's something I've always been aware of, but I'm just really trying to do a good job of preventing that now. Mm-hmm. And I just feel like when I have to like just throw on like a blah outfit, yeah. it doesn't make me feel my best because mm-hmm. I don't look my best. And I just want everything to be in alignment. I just, I want to be like more pro, like productive and just proactive. And I, I want to be able to go into my closet and like, like everything that I'm seeing. And I want my space around me to reflect the kind of like life I want to be living. And I just want to redo everything in this simplify and get rid of all of the tchotchke that I love. Mm-hmm. I mean, I love a lot of stuff, but yeah. I just feel like I need to like simplify, just tone it down a little bit. I see what you mean. You know, get into like a real groove of like quality versus quantity. I see what you mean. You know? Yeah, like the YouTube video aesthetic, like I hope that you guys know what I'm talking about. Kind of, yeah. You know, the... Mm, not really. I wanted to just look like elevated luxury but like simple riviera vibes yeah you know just like elegant and simple i can't wait to watch riviera and review it for you guys we've been talking about this show since this podcast has started Episode one. <laughs> and we have yet to review it <laughs> yes yeah. it's gonna come we're gonna watch that we're definitely gonna watch that this week coming soon like it's happening yeah we got a couple shows in store for you guys but this week we're back to netflix yes we are and we are diving into season two of one of like i love this show mm-hmm. so much i love this show dead to me oh my gosh you guys Adriana convinced me to watch this show. You're welcome. I was a little hesitant at first because it seemed kind of heavy. I thought I was going to cry. No. Mind you, I did cry in the first episode just because, like, I was, oh my, I was like, oh my gosh, this woman, her husband's gone. I'm so sad for her. Mm -hmm. And I love her. Yes. Isn't she amazing? She's great in the show. Okay, so everybody that hasn't seen it, it's... In their second season, it's on Netflix. It's about a woman that suddenly loses her her husband in a tragic car accident. He's hit by a car, dies, and she is left to take care of their two sons and kind of pick up the pieces of her life. And yes. so you start the show with her burying her husband and then starting the grieving process. And she attends a um, grief management group mm-hmm. where she makes a friend. She meets a friend and they form a bond and a friendship through their shared grief. Um, This woman has suffered um, many miscarriages in her relationship. But season one, this is not what we know about this woman. No. She starts off this friendship with a lie. Yes. And says that she lost her fiancé suddenly. So she bonds with her over that. And later on in the season, it comes to, like, light... That her fiancé isn't dead. Yeah, her fiancé isn't dead. They're just broken up. (laughs) Yeah, and I think that is super important to note. Her husband isn't dead because we get that shock season one and season two, first episode, we kind of get that shock too because you think, oh my gosh, her fiancé isn't dead again. I'm getting ahead of myself, but if you guys have seen the show, you know exactly what we're talking about. Yes, for everybody that hasn't seen season one, like... Go watch and then come back Mm -hmm. and then we can talk about it because we're just going to spoil this whole thing. Season two, it opens up. Okay, so season one ends where this woman does find out that her friend is actually the person that killed her husband. And that is a main factor in why she has sought out her friendship because she wants to know like who whose life she's affected and who is at the other end of this guilty. act yeah. and she's dealing with her own guilt but by befriending the person i don't think she thought she would hit it off with her and then mm-hmm. she did and they were like besties and she's like oh my god and she she moves into her home and they bond and they really create a friendship in a way that i don't think either of them has have ever had friends yeah. before so it's definitely it's uh 
it's an internal pull Mm -hmm. for her. And I think their friendship is so cute. And you know that feeling that you get when you really connect with someone new? It's like you're starting a new relationship with a guy. You kind of get that giddy feeling. It's like, oh my gosh, my friend. Like, she's so cool. Yeah. I just want to impress her. She's so fun. I don't want to hang out with anyone else. You definitely get that dynamic with them season one. They're just like, wow, I haven't had a friend like this before. And they're both seemingly dealing with grief. Yeah. Yeah, and they're both very different. Like, I don't know her her character's name, Christina Applegate, Blondie. I just call her Blondie. Jen, Jen and Judy. Yeah. Okay, so Jen's character is just mean and bitchy and acerbic and in your face and upfront and like she's a Scorpio. I just love her. <laughs> <laughs> like she is, she's me. <laughs> like I just feel like in so many ways I'm just like, you know, I'm just mean Not like with that. The bullshit. Yeah, like I'm just. You know, I'm just saying it like it is. And I just, I love people like that. But on the flip side, she has anger issues. Oh, serious anger issues. Definitely. Like, she will pop off on anyone. She is not in control of her emotions at all. No. And this comes into play even more when she does things that yeah, when she she's kills guilty for. When she <laughs> the guy at the end kills. of the season one. Yeah. <laughs> so... That's a dead giveaway as to her guiltiness. Her anger starts coming out more. But I think it makes her character real. They don't want this woman to be perfect. She's an imperfect mother. She might have a drinking problem. Yeah, imperfect wife. She's she's such... She has such a drinking problem. Okay, I'm glad I'm not the only one that noticed that. (laughs) She drinks at like 10 a.m. And I get it. Your husband died. You're grieving. It's tough. And... She's dealing with people around her that are really just so stupid in so many ways. <laughs> like the the neighbor, the mother-in-law. You're just like, oh, my God. Um, but those but, characters are for comedic purposes. We oh, love them. for sure. I love the mother-in-law. I think I she's so funny. I love the gay business partner. <laughs> yes. With the dog. Yes. I love him. Um, and then on the flip side, her friend Judy. Okay, we just talked about Jen. Mm -hmm. Judy, on the other hand, is this sweet, kind, seemingly innocent, just like ball of love. Yes, she's a Pisces. And in season two, they say her birthday. Her birthday is February 21st, the day after (laughs) mine. I was like, wow. Yeah, and you know what's funny? I was actually thinking about what their signs could be the entire show. And I was like, okay, Jen is an Aries and Judy's a Cancer. I thought Judy was going to be a Cancer. Yeah. But I see the Pisces energy because she does have a bad bitch quality to her. Like, she is very cool. Like, she's not sweet and innocent and mild in a we hate you way. It's in like a, you're just, you're really that genuine. Yeah. And she's like a sweet soul Mm -hmm. in a way that's like, brings people in. Definitely. For sure. Very intriguing. Mm -hmm. We love that about her. Yeah. But then again, on the flip side, it can almost be to a fault. Because while the investigation is going on, keep in mind, she killed this lady's husband, her new friend. Right. This is the guy that she killed. And she inserts herself into the investigation to try to, you know, make herself feel better. She inserts herself into this woman's life Mm -hmm. to alleviate her guilt. Yeah. And it ends up biting her in the ass. Yes. Right? Her entire life seemingly falls apart because she can't stay out of things. Yes. She just has to help. She has to help. She has to make things better. And it is very nice. It is very, like, we, we she's like got, it, but She's we a Captain Sabo. Definitely, yeah. <laughs> it's almost like, Judy, just care a little less, please. Yeah, like, just stay out of it. Mm-hmm. Um, And her Mm ex-boyfriend you know they're going back and forth a little bit he still clearly cares for her and she still is hung up on him but he's toxic but he is so toxic (laughs) right i love um james marsden as an actor like i love him um i loved him in this role i thought he played like the suave professional like just JFK has it all going for him. Described him perfectly. Yes, perfect. Like, I loved him in this role. Um, but he's he has his things. Like, mm-hmm. he can be mean and he can be nasty and very aggressive. And he's a money launderer. And 
<laughs> oh my gosh, but I love how they talk about money laundering in this show like it's a real crime. Like, what harm does money laundering do? I mean, technically it is. You go to jail for that. He was a peripheral member of this Greek crime syndicate, okay? <laughs> he does none of the heavy lifting. Like, to me, you're not a criminal if you're the one that oversees the money laundering. You're, moving, you're like, moving you're, the money. You're an errand boy. Not really. He can bring the whole operation down, and he keeps everything going. He cleans the money. Well, now he's dead, because at the end of season one, all of these characters just... Uh, Everything comes to a climax. You yeah. Know, Judy is in Jen's life, and then the ex comes into their life, and they're all just trying to figure each other out, and yeah, the anger doing- and the guilt, and it all comes to a climax with Jen killing this guy. Yeah. What's his character's name? Sam? Steve. 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 Mm-hmm. Um. You know, they're so intertwined. Jen is is selling him property, and then he blacks out of the deal, and then Judy's turning him in, and she's being investigated, and the, the her, remember the black guy that she was dating oh for a gosh, little bit that cop. started to investigate he her. I didn't like him, by the way. I didn't like him at all. Me either. <laughs> like, his hairline bothered me so oh much. Oh my gosh, and why like, didn't he have a haircut? He just was... He was so intense and like, dude, relax. You know what? He gives me cancer vibes. <laughs> <laughs> no, he gives me like scorned Virgo vibes. Oh, no. A scorned Virgo will do you in. He just took the L and went and be, like to be depressed in his house. So that gives me like sorry man cancer energy. My cancer exes are quaking anyways. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah. yeah. And although the plot is windy and a lot of things happen, it's not confusing. No, it's not confusing. And I like that although the season ended on, like, such a cliffhanger, you did feel like the characters all came to a place where they were, like, they've told one story. Mm -hmm. And they were starting a new one. Definitely. Because season two opens and, you know, you're... They're now dealing with this dead body of Steve in um, in the pool. And mm-hmm. Jen calls the person that only she could call, which is Judy. Judy. Even and though she done killed her husband and she knows. And uh, even though their lives are basically messed up because of each other. Yeah. That friendship just kind of... Bonds them together. Yeah. It's like... You have to rely on the person that knows your deepest, darkest secret. And, like, Mm -hmm. that's, you know, at that point, it's like she is the only person you could trust because you know that she's able to keep a secret, keep, and, you know. And participate in a crime. Participate in a crime, yeah. Carry out (laughs) some illegal shit. Like, hide a body. Um, Yeah. So, yeah, they hide this body in the freezer, but Mm -hmm. shocker. And I will say, I like how they did this because I was a little sad when Steve died, because I love that actor. Me too. And I was just like, damn, like, he's gone off the show. That sucks. Uh-huh. But then his <laughs> twin brother shows up to the door, and we're like, wait, Steve is alive? What the fuck? And then he's like, no, I'm Ben, actually. I didn't. I, okay, so this is my I thing. I thought it would be corny, but I liked it. I thought it was very corny. I was like, this is corny. <laughs> I'm like, come on. He has a twin brother that yeah. no one ever knew about or talked about or we didn't allude to. Yeah. Or... But the show was a comedy, so I think it fit. Yeah, it did. Exactly. And I liked having him back on the show. I just thought it was like, mm, really? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so his brother shows up because obviously his brother's missing and... He's looking for Judy and, you know, he's trying to piece together the final days and weeks that led up to his brother disappearing. He's under the impression, you know, he's done some illegal shit. He's being investigated. Maybe he's he's run away. Maybe he's gone into hiding. Maybe the people that he's working with are behind this. I think at first he definitely feels like. I don't know what to believe, mm-hmm. um, especially because Steve has such a checkered past. And just yeah. uh, he says at one point, he's like, trouble always follows Steve, mm-hmm. which is what Steve always said about Judy. And it's true. Like, they're both kind of like hurricanes onto themselves. Yeah. Um, And it's just interesting to see how the brother weaves into the story and then gets 
just as tangled with both of these women as his as brother his brother was. did. Isn't that funny? Yeah. What do you think about him and Jen having interest in each I other? I love them together. I like them. But I like they can't be together, but I love them. Yeah. But then something tells me, like, maybe they'll get past that. <laughs> I just think it's weird how your best friend is going to date your ex's twin brother. You because, know like, how I feel about twins. Yeah. Like, <laughs> no, we, we know how you... I know how you feel about twins. Okay, so I have a theory, like... If you date somebody that's a twin, like, you just, yes, they are different people, but, like, technically you're attracted to their brother or sister or whoever also, and that is just very weird to me. That's a little sick. That was my first thought. I was like, is Judy going to start falling for Ben? Because if so, that's a little sick. I thought that too. But, because although they look the same, they are brothers. And very different. And if they different. didn't look the same, it would be very strange. And also, Jen falling for him is like, wait man, honey, did you like my, my man, man the whole That's time? what I thought the Yeah. Whole time. When when Judy starts to freak out because she sees them kiss for the first time mm-hmm. at the the wake, yeah, the memorial mm-hmm. vigil, whatever it was, um, I was like, "Ooh, girl is." I thought she was jealous in a way, Same. like jealous in a protective way. Like he looks just like my man. That's his brother. That's like weird, you yeah. killed him. It's. I just thought it was like a weird, jealous, protective thing, and that's what I would have thought of. And like, oh, so you liked my man. Oh, yeah. oh, okay, I see you. And also, let's not forget, Jen killed his brother. Yes. How are you going to date him when you know you've done that? And also, you have the brother's mind. I mean, you have the brother's face dead in your mind. Yes. And then you wake up and you're looking at him and he has the same face and you're in love. I'm confused. Yes, it is very confusing. And I think it's confusing for her. And that's why when they do finally, like, have sex and, like, have their moment, it she wakes up and she's like filled with regret she's Mm -hmm. a basket case at that point and it's i would be too like it's very weird Mm -hmm. you killed the brother he was so awful to you in some ways you're always going to think of of him when you look at him you you're going to think of sam Mm -hmm. when you look at ben and so it's just like ugh, icky very icky it's very icky not sam steve Steve. <laughs> it's just very icky. We're we're bad with names. Yes, very time. bad with names. <laughs> but I will say I do really like the show because it's funny, it's smart, mm-hmm. and it gives me the right amount of drama to campy Mm -hmm. this ratio. It is. And I love seeing these two middle aged women like unravel. I do too. Like right? Jen is a is a real She's a problem. She's a mess. (laughs) She's a mess. Like, her credit cards are maxed out. Her (laughs) house is behind on payment. She's not focused at work. She's so mean to her clients. Her her mother-in-law is just like, ma'am. A bitch. (laughs) You're just not it. Yeah. In so many ways. And I think she's still dealing with a whole lot of grief of losing her husband. And then finding out in season one, you find out he was cheating with the young bimbo. Can we get into that? Because I mentioned this to you yesterday when I finished season one. And really seeing that made me sick. I was like, men will really make you make all the money work. Take care of them so they can pursue their dreams and then cheat on you mm-hmm. with a younger, hotter version of you. That's dumb. Sick. That's also dumb, right? What got me was that the girl, when Jen meets her, she's so just like clueless. Completely. And, and most Jen of them is so are. Smart in comparison. Most, most of like the young you know, bimbo side pieces, they're completely clueless. All they care about is like, oh, are are we going to go to dinner tomorrow? And like, are we going to go on vacation? And like, oh my God, you bought me a bracelet? Like, you're so nice. Like, they're completely oblivious. Like, you know, some of them might get caught up and leave your husband, your wife, and da 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 da, da and all but of that. She but she didn't know that he even had yeah, a wife, which but, is the sick part. Exactly. Like she's completely in the dark, and she doesn't really care. She's just like, I'm happy. I'm I'm dating this guy. Whatever. You know. Um, so unfortunate because in comparison, Jen Jen is really smart. We see this throughout the entire show, and she's like a very strong woman. Mm-hmm. So the fact that 
the wom- the woman that he chose to cheat on her with was the direct opposite of her it's so sad it's so disheartening yeah it's a it's a gut punch for her because mm-hmm. she's like god have i been this um disillusioned to the reality of my mm-hmm. life and completely oblivious to what her husband wants needs and is looking for in a relationship yeah um but also her kids she didn't know she barely knew what her kids were up, up to. to yeah the kids what do you think of the kids i love the kids they're adorable i the, the younger boy is just so he's cute to me he's such a cutie He's like so sweet mm-hmm. and he likes the the he, he thinks the bird is his dad. <laughs> I loved that part. <laughs> Me too. I loved it. Absolutely. And when he joins the little Christian choir, <laughs> when he gets baptized, I'm like, "Yes, honey." Yeah, I think it's so cute. Uh, I it's the show has like these like that to me is all very campy, but in a cute way that gives some levity to the dramatics of it. Yeah. Yeah. Murder and <laughs> money laundering. <laughs> um, what did you think of the um the police officer that's investigating? Oh the woman girl Perez. Perez. Okay, so I have a love hate relationship with Perez. Mm-hmm. I like her on one hand because I feel like in season two, the later episodes, we get to know way more about her. Yeah, I like that they ga- I like that they yeah. gave her a story for sure, and I like that we got some insight into like who she was and what mm-hmm. drives her, and I like that. I like that they made her like a real person and not just this like mean bitchy cop art- archetype. Mm-hmm. Archetype, yeah, definitely. How do you feel about her? Um, I like her. I think she's really smart. I think mm-hmm. she's like right on the money, obviously. She's figured out the whole thing. She just can't prove it. Yeah. Um, and that's because there's no evidence. Like the car that Judy hit um the husband with is in storage, you know, she doesn't have the evidence to prove that um Steve is really laundry money for the Greek uh mafia. Mafia. You know, she's missing the the vital pieces of of information to make it but she's stick figured in it court, out. but she's she's figured it out. I like that. And she she you can tell that she's just got she's one of those cops that has like those gut feelings mm-hmm. about people and she's just like Mm-mm. she's a good cop. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Compare I okay. Well, <laughs> yeah. She she's a better cop than I think um, Nick, the guy yeah. Judy was dating, yeah. he's just like, uh, he's so annoying. Like he's <laughs> he's just ill to me. <laughs> um, how? Okay, so in season two, you know, Judy is now left single. Her her man's was killed, and he's mm-hmm. in the freezer. She's Ay, had pobre. to to bury him, and you know, she starts a little thing, the thing, a little thing. Okay, so. I like Judy's love interest and I like how they approach sexuality in the show because Judy was dating a guy before. We don't know she likes women, but they don't address it. It's just like, now I like a girl. It's not a big deal. Yeah, I liked it too. At first I was like, is she going to reject her? Like, is Judy into this? Like, Mm Because at first it felt very much like Judy just thought of this girl as As a a friend friend. and that was it and wasn't much more complicated than that but you could totally tell that she was giving her vibes yeah um but when she finally made the move judy was totally into it so i was Mm -hmm. like okay cool um but i thought they were gonna have her reject her and i was like this is gonna be so sad and you know what's funny i guess not you but a few other pisces's pisces 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 women that i know tend to be fluid Hmm. they're just like love me (laughs) i mean sure i guess judy gives me very just love me energy yeah for sure yeah and i like that but Mm -hmm. i just i was just so worried for this other girl i was like oh no don't break her heart we like her i like she's so she was so nice i liked her Mm -hmm. um i like the character i like how they met i like that she had like the difficult mom that was sick and in the nursing home and you know i liked that whole thing and i liked the connection with the ex that she's living with is the cop that's yeah i just like the the co-mingling of all the characters i love how all of these characters intersect and intertwine and interact with each other in this show yeah me too it's very well done i read an article that said (laughs) what no because you were like 
Well, <laughs> <laughs> no, because I didn't want to lose my thought. Oh. I read an article that said the show is about motherhood. And all of these characters have very complicated relationships mm. with their mothers. I want to know what you think the show is about. Because at first we think it's about dealing with grief. And then we kind of think, oh, maybe it's about dealing with guilt. Thoughts? I think it's really about friendship. Mm, friendship. I think it's about the relationships that you need. Mm. You know? Not necessarily the relationships that you want, but the ones that you need. Yeah. I think, you know, Judy's... In season two, you meet Judy's mom, who was a drug addict, was in and out of her life, that um, is in jail once again um, after basically abandoning her and her having to raise herself. Um... And you see, she just, she wants something from Judy. She wants her to, you know, pay for a lawyer. She wants her to write a letter to the parole board for her. And it's not a genuine, you're my daughter, I'm your mother, we don't have a relationship, let's mend these fences. Mm -hmm. Um, And then you find out that um, the death of Jen's mother affected her deeply. She never dealt with it as a child Mm -hmm. um she resented her mother through her mother being sick for many years and then dying yeah um and you see kind of like these difficult relationships even um steve and what's the ben Mm -hmm. steve and ben like their mother is sick and she's dealing she's leaning on him and he's like i'm so over you yeah and you know you see all these relationships are very difficult but they're finding these connections that they really need um to bring themselves outside of themselves and to for them to feel more fully um in unlikely places and that's why their bonds are so strong i would agree with you i completely agree with you the show has a very interesting take on friendships because they can be difficult very tumultuous even in this show but at the end of the day they always come back together and they fulfill their lives in a way that other relationships just can't yeah and they really lean on each other like like judy and jen when when jen goes to turn herself in Mm -hmm. for killing this brother at the end um she leaves judy her children oh my god yes and i actually liked that because judy has shown herself to be such a great mother like she yeah can't be a mom but she has been such a mother to jen's kids yeah In a way that Jen wouldn't have been able to ever. She just doesn't have the personality or the the tender spirit almost. She's just not that type of mom. Yeah. Um, And, you know, you get those types of relationships and needs met by other people. And that's why they say, like, it really does take a village to raise a child. Mm -hmm. And I like that they're creating their own little village Mm -hmm. with each other. I thought that was... I mean, that's such a huge thing to leave someone your children. I mean, wow. Their friendship is just (laughs) something else to me. Yeah, and they haven't known each other for very long, and so much has happened. (laughs) But (laughs) it's one of those cosmic situations between them. They met, and it felt like they already knew each other. They were already comfortable. I just think the show is so cute. I'm so so glad you like it. No, I really like it. I'm glad that you recommended it to me for sure. I recommend things and people think like, oh, I'm not going to like this. I'm like, trust me, you're going to like this. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. I thought it would be heavy, but it's light and fun. Yeah. Go watch it, you guys. For sure. And then, okay, we have to talk about the the last episode, last moments. Judy gets her arc work back. Yes. Bitch is bawling. What do you think of Judy's artwork? I think it's weird. It is weird. <laughs> like, why did they make her have that artwork? It's <laughs> <laughs> like, I was looking at it like, who, who's going to buy this? It's so ugly. Like, it's, okay, I'm glad I'm not the only one. Is it supposed to be ugly and funny? I think so. Okay. I don't think she's supposed to be a good artist. Okay. okay. Otherwise, like, she would be famous. Okay. Right? Wouldn't she mm-hmm. be successful? Like, she would have somewhere to live, like... I suppose, but Steve's parting gift 
unintentionally is that he has money in her paintings. But was it Steve's money? That is it, or is it like drug money she shouldn't have? Oh, that is gonna be an interesting question for season three. That's what I thought. Yeah. I was like, whose money is that mm-hmm. girl? Like, it might be Steve's, but Steve could have been holding it for somebody else. Somebody could want a payment. Somebody like, finna come looking for Steve and that money eventually. That's how I feel. That's how I think season three is gonna play out. Me too. Mm-hmm. I think season three is going to be a. Uh, matter of the police chief um finally being taken down and prosecuted Mm -hmm. and um coming out as like the head of the greek mafia yeah and um people coming after judy because of steve i think that's what's gonna play out in season three and i think his brother is gonna have to step in which you know that's gonna be its own thing with him drunk driving and crashing into them you know, falling off the wagon. I think it's going to be one of those webs that's being weaved again. Yeah. But I'm I'm excited to see this play out. I yeah. hope that with everything going on, I don't know when they're going to film, oh. but I hope season three comes out soon. Yeah, hopefully. It's I mean, I doubt it. It's going to be such a long time. TV is just, it's on hiatus. Like everything's going to be so slow of a rollout i wonder when we're gonna run out of new things to watch because i feel like new releases come out every year consistently but are we gonna get to a point where we're just not gonna have anything new coming out i think end of like the middle to end of 2021 where there's gonna be a lull Hmm. there's gonna be yeah isa okay yeah i think they they probably have things in they can right now for the rest of the year. Maybe even 2021 beginning, yeah, there'll be a sure. lull. Yeah, because if you think about it, Love is Blind, another Netflix show, came out the end of last year mm-hmm. or the beginning of this year. And then they had filmed it two years before. So it's very possible they have things from two years ago, yeah. one year ago, yeah. still ready to come out. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, but but, but there'll definitely be a lull. But I but I liked not dead it to me. Yeah, um, I liked how this season ended mm-hmm. and uh, bringing them back together. Oh yeah, all of their storylines converging in that car accident at the end. I thought it was interesting. Yeah, I will say that although we might not see this for a bit, they did kind of close enough things for me to be satisfied yeah it it was a cliffhanger ending but not that much of a cliffhanger no not in the way that season one was a cliffhanger for sure i like that they they closed the loops like they we know judy's not going to be prosecuted for the husband we know jen is not going to be prosecuted for the brother Mm -hmm. you know those kinds of loops have been closed um fully hopefully yeah i would hate for them to come and rescind on any of those um yeah that'd be not but i think it's season three is gonna be about like the mafia the money and that kind of stuff i love these women yeah i love these characters me too i really do i i love the show (laughs) i think it's so good another show i want you to watch if you like this is glow glow you keep telling me about this show selena oh my god if anybody can back me up and jump in cc's inbox (laughs) tell her that glow is so good. I love that show so much. It's so funny. Hop in my DMs and tell me about glow. I didn't think you were a funny TV show person because I don't tend to watch comedies. I don't tend to watch comedies that much either, but some like if they're smart and funny, mm-hmm. I like them. And glow is smart and funny. It's catty. It's You know, I also think I like comedies that center around women. I feel like, in general, I just don't like men that much. (laughs) Like, I don't don't like like men. You know, like, men content is just, like, not what I want out of a comedy. I just feel like the humor for me, when it comes to men, I'm just like, you're not funny. But when when the writing is smart and like woman focused and I can see myself in the characters and stuff, I identify with it. So I like it. Yeah, I definitely see what you mean. And it also helps that um, Dead to Me is woman directed, female directed. Yeah. So, you know, it's it's for us. Yeah. 
glow is so funny it's so good i just start to watch the first episode like with a glass of wine and you'll like totally it's it's like a glass of wine show yes okay definitely it's on a friday night like okay yes (laughs) it's so funny i love it love it okay just get into it (laughs) (laughs) okay so that's our our dead to me recap do you have any more overall thoughts no, I two got, thumbs up. I got everything out there. Five stars. Two thumbs up. Ten stars. Highly recommend. We love it for sure. Mm-hmm. I totally agree. Um, so yeah, let's get into the tea. What's your tea this week? What's the tea, honey? Oh, the tea is well. Let's start with call her daddy. We we got to follow up on this. Some things have okay. happened with that podcast. Yes. So did you listen to? Okay. Let's give them an update. For, update is? For those of you guys who don't know, Alexandra Cooper is a single father and she is doing the podcast on her own. She released a YouTube video mm-hmm. detailing the whole situation. It was 30 minutes long, very thorough. Very. And I will say it kind of, what's that word? Not exonerate, but like it excused her. Is that the right word? It explained... It explained her her side of the story, and it explained the... I think it did a good job of not just telling her side of the story, but telling it from a place that was, like, unbiased, and she wasn't trying to throw Sophia under the bus, Mm -hmm. which I appreciated. Yeah, and she she, she could have been totally nasty. Oh, for sure. And she also didn't try to make herself look good. She seemed very honest. Yeah. At the end of that YouTube video, she said the infamous see you fuckers on Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Wednesday comes around. She releases her first solo episode of Call Her Daddy, which I hope you listen to. I did. And I liked it. How did you feel? Okay, so go to just rewind for a second. Mm-hmm. I When I watched the video that she released on YouTube, mm-hmm. I was like, okay, I see how all of this plays out. Um... But I really do think that where, and I'll, st- for me, it's always the principle of the matter. Mm-hmm. And for me, everything she's done now is justified. But I think the way she handled negotiations behind Sophia's back prior to this, in getting a raise, and not disclosing that, and keeping that kind of secret about in the difference in the money that they were making, really would have so it's it just sowed a bad seed. You know, it mm-hmm. really tainted the water, I think, of what could have been a longer relationship for them. You know, maybe that wouldn't have been the case, but I do think that regardless of how Sophia has handled these negotiations and everything that has played out now, she is almost justified in feeling like I have to look out for myself because her co- her co-worker, her co-host, her business partner was dishonest in a way. You know, she didn't disclose that she was making more money and you that's just it just leaves a bad taste in your mouth about somebody. So I understand Sophia in that regard Mm -hmm. still I said that last week on the podcast and I still kind of feel like I still definitely feel like that I do think it just it poisoned the water I feel bad for Sophia I don't hate her no but at the same time I am now on Alex's side just because of how things played out in Mm -hmm. when when the press started getting light of it and when things came to light. Alex made a 30-minute detailed video. She didn't try to make herself look good. Sophia made a two-minute Instagram story with very vague details. All she said was, Alex stabs me in the back, which leads me to believe that she didn't want to explain the whole situation because it would make her look bad. Yeah. And I definitely feel like her and her boyfriend... They don't care about the show. All they care about is money. The thing that Alex kept reiterating was Sophia said she doesn't care about the IP and she didn't care about the brand. Mm -hmm. And she didn't care if they got sued. And, like, for us, we created this podcast and it's kind of our baby in a way. You have these 
things that you love and that you spend so much time creatively developing Mm -hmm. for you to just throw it all away yeah i could understand why alex would feel like she needed to separate herself from sophia and think about her brand her career for sure for sure for sure i think Going forward, like, you you really see that, especially in the first episode, she's very focused on continuing the family, continuing mm-hmm. the group morale around the show. Like, she knows the importance of the community and the audience that they've built, mm-hmm. and she's very dedicated to that, which is top priority when you're doing any sort of public platform like a podcast like it is all about the audience you want to serve them you want to entertain them and you can't just abandon them um i have to say at first when i thought the podcast wasn't gonna happen i did feel abandoned so when i listened to (laughs) no i'm faithful daddy gang you guys know this so when i listened to the episode that's something that I really liked that she told us. Like, I care about you guys. I care about this brand. I want to keep it going no matter what. Yeah. That's important. Mm-hmm. Um, I just wish they would have had some better communication. Like, this could have really been worked out with just a private conversation. Like, without the boyfriend in the, in the room. Like, on speaker. You know? Yeah, Sometimes but- you just need to, like... Like... Alex maybe needed to, like, walk over to her house or wherever and be like, we need to have a conversation, like, and you need to back up. But it seems as though Sophia and Peter's relationship is a little toxy, and I definitely got that vibe from months of listening to this podcast, like... The way that they, she said they would argue about things and just like, I didn't like Suitman from the beginning. And I definitely think with Sophia's person, I'm thinking about Sophia's personality and I can see how she would get sucked into a A toxic toxic relationship. relationship. That makes sense. And, you know. You know, when you're in there, you're in it. When you're in there, you're in it and it's hard to get out. And it Mm -hmm. sucks because when she does get out, she's going to realize that she lost a friendship and a career over this toxic relationship. But, like, all of you guys who have been in toxic relationships know that that shit's normal. (laughs) (laughs) Just something like, oh, I just lost my career and my best friend and I have no mans. Yikes. Okay, yeah. (laughs) You know, she'll... I think she can go... She has 800,000 followers on instagram like she can continue to do things she can start a youtube channel she can create a blog like she can build up her own thing and alex can continue with call her daddy and you know she'll go on and she'll be fine i want sophia to make a comeback in like a year or two to call her daddy Oh, to the show? Yeah. You think so? I think so. They're young. They're 25. And I know they, they are They very broke up young. over... Dumb crap. Yeah. So I definitely think they could be friends again and come back together and continue the pod because their dynamic is unmatched. I don't know. I feel like Alex is going to be like, I heavy lifted us by myself for a year. Bitch, you're not coming back. I've continued this. I've grown this. Like, this is really my baby. She is... This is really her baby now. Yeah. Like, Sophie is not coming back. We'll see. I think she's it'd be... <laughs> Alex isn't giving her shit. <laughs> I think it would be a very good strategic move to be like, Sophia's back. The prodigal son back, back at it again. <laughs> It would, like, everyone would just tune in even more. Like, how their ratings went up now and yeah. their rank went up now, if it starts to drop again, Sophia needs to come back to, like, give a little shock. Oh, my God. I, I can see it. I can see Sophia's come back in my mind. Maybe. We'll see. We'll see. But as far as other tea this week, I have things I want to talk about <laughs> that Adriana told me were irrelevant, but I don't care. We're going to talk about them. Doja Cat is canceled. Yeah, she is, because apparently (laughs) she, I don't know, socializes with white supremacists? Is that what it is? Yes, so Doja Cat is a self-proclaimed weird girl, Uh okay? She calls herself weird. Apparently, she likes to go into these chat rooms. She's been going into them since she was a young girl, And she's just continued. And if you guys are familiar with these shady chat rooms, they 
can be a breeding ground for white supremacists mm-hmm. and racists, and they can say whatever they want. And because it's anonymous, it's like it doesn't. Where matter. do chat rooms live now? Because chat rooms used to live on like MSN, <laughs> MSN Messenger, and like AOL Messenger. But like, is a modern chat room just like a Twitter thread or like a Reddit? Okay, it's kind of like a Reddit, but our little sister actually told me the name of the website she was on. It's called 4chan. So it's like a weird dark web website. I don't even know Danny if we know did. <laughs> Sister Danny has got her toes dipped in some things, honey. <laughs> Danny! But um, BBC News reported that she denied um, the allegations that she was stripping for white supremacists online and laughing at racist insults. I saw the statement she came out. I'll read a little bit of it for you guys. I want to address what's been happening on Twitter. I've used public chat rooms to social life ever since I was a child. I'm a black woman. Half of my family is black from South Africa, and I'm very proud of where I come from. Skip, skip, skip. I understand my influence and impact, and I'm taking this all very seriously. I love you all, and I'm very sorry for upsetting or hurting any of you. She doesn't deny using the chat rooms and apparently there's videos circulating on twitter of her laughing at the jokes so to me it's like you're guilty interesting right i don't listen to her music so i'm not very invested we know that one tiktok song that's it but guess what the remix with Nicki minaj has actually didn't it go number one yeah but Nicki minaj removed her credit on it Ooh. Mm-hmm. Uh, right? And I oop. <laughs> and I oop, yeah. People are really turning against her. Oh, wow. And I don't know if she's going to be able to come back to this. This is interesting. Come back from this. This is the wrong week to be racist. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Truly. And I just think it's funny how Lana Del Rey mentioned her in her little rant. Uh-huh. And then the next day, Doja Cat was canceled too. It's yeah. like, wow. Although Lana's not... Lana's not canceled, in my opinion. Okay. In other news... <laughs> <laughs> in other news, real quick, you guys, we can't have a tea segment without talking about this. Breaking news, Scott Disick and Sophia Ritchie are no longer. They're broken up. They're done. I'm sad for him. I'm sad for her. I'm sad for him. He was just going through... He just won't... Over well, went back to rehab. Right? He went back to rehab. That information was leaked. He had to pull himself out of that. Like I think he's dealing with some mental health issues, which we know we he's had and suffered from the grief of his parents. He's never really dealt with that, and that's why he was in rehab to deal with that. And you know, having his privacy violated in that way can be traumatic in its own. Mm-hmm. So I just think this breakup is like just bad timing. Obviously, you can't time a breakup. It is what it is. But I feel bad for him. I love Scott. Scott is like my fave Kardashian. Me too. I love Scott. I think he's so funny. I think he's like the one normal person on the show with more of a brain. Me too. He's just so hilarious. And like, obviously, he's had his moments, but I just love him. I just love him too. And I feel bad for Sophia because they were together for three years. Three years. And she's young. So that's probably really hard for her and it did seem like they were in love it did i i think they really enjoyed each other obviously he she spent time with the family around his kids and Mm -hmm. she was pretty ingrained in like kardashian life over the the evolution of their relationship and yeah she is very young Mm -hmm. um there's a huge age difference there which has always been a little weird um But, you know, I think she'll, she's young. She'll bounce back and she's got lots of models to date in her future. <laughs> <laughs> she'll be fine. <laughs> but E! News actually reported that there wasn't a fight or anything bad that happened between them. Sophia simply wishes to do her own thing while Scott takes care of his health. I agree. Which makes sense. Makes sense. I mean, he's, do- he's dealing with something. She's too young to handle it. Girl, get out. You're so cute. Maybe this is for the best while well, Scott figures his stuff out. Although, you know, when when does Scott ever really figure his stuff out? It's sad, but it is sad. His whole life has been just—he's just one of those people that's like plagued with 
anxiety and issues and mm-hmm. substance abuse. He's just one of those like tortured, troubled souls, mm-hmm. um, which is just sad. I know. I always sad. feel for people like that. I, I sometimes I'm just like, girl, just like get happy. But I know it's not that simple. Definitely um, not. He's gonna deal with substance abuse and his emotional issues for the rest of his life, and he's gonna have periods of good times and periods of bad times. So whoever he gets with definitely has to understand that because it seems like Sophia can't handle it. Yeah, which yeah. makes sense because she's a baby. Mm-hmm. I think we're the same age. A super baby. <laughs> <laughs> and Scott has been, Scott has been on TV for like most of her life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At this point. Oh gosh. <laughs> Anyways, last piece of tea that Adriana doesn't care about, but I definitely do. (laughs) Tana Mojo has been the latest influencer to join OnlyFans. Did you see Safari's video? No, wait. Backtrack. (laughs) If you guys remember our tea from a couple episodes ago, we talked about Safari joining OnlyFans. (laughs) Is something coming full circle? What video? Oh my god, there's a video. Okay, so apparently he posted his first explicit video. <laughs> of the... Yes. The junk. Of the junk. He is touching himself and <laughs> it is explicit. I'll, I'll show it to you later. Oh my um, gosh. It's, it's out? It leaked? Somebody, I guess, screenshotted it or, or recorded it. They can get sued, but um, continue. Yeah, I watched the video. I was like, whoa. Well, it's just like a... I don't know if it was just like cut off because of how the person recorded it or whatever, but like you don't see his face. It's just like his torso. (laughs) Is it bad? It's not bad. It's just like, whoa. (laughs) Like, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. How long is the video? I don't know. I saw a clip of it on on Twitter. Okay. I I don't know how I feel about all of these celebrities doing the OnlyFans thing. Who is the girl you talked about? Tana Mojo Who is, is a YouTuber. And she's known for kind of just being a hot girl oh, on YouTube. Oh, that's the girl that was uh, engaged to married. Jake Paul? They, they got married, oh, okay. yeah, to Jake Her. Paul. Okay, yeah. yeah. And she's I know just known talking. for Blonde. being... Blondie. Mm-hmm. She's just known for being very controversial, very wild, and she's hot. So people have been saying, you know, we want explicit content from you for so long, and OnlyFans is making a resurgence, especially in the celebrity world. So interesting. So, so is she gonna it. is she gonna do like full on like videos? So far, she's only posted her boobs. Because I guess you got to start off like Like light. full boob? Full boob. Okay. She has a video smoking a joint um, and she's topless. You know, very on brand for Tana. Okay. And I like this for her, but I don't know if this is going to be her main thing now. Because it literally, her OnlyFans crashed like as soon as she launched it because so many people just bought it wow yeah so it's like i want you to keep making youtube videos i don't want you to be a porn star interesting right can't you do both (laughs) she's gonna make so much money from OnlyFans. what's the point of her making a youtube video that's probably going to be demonetized anyway because that's the type of person she is i just feel like if when you get to a certain level, you're not doing YouTube for money. Mm-hmm. You're doing YouTube for exposure and just continued, like, fame. Mm-hmm. You know, it would only help her to continue doing YouTube because that's where her audience knows her, loves her. And she can move those people to an additional to stream, of in- fans. stream of income with OnlyFans. Yeah. I gotta admit... When Kat and I saw this news, we almost bought it because it's only $5. So it's like, why wouldn't you want to see? Hmm. Right? Interesting. Interesting. The OnlyFans thing is so interesting to me. It is. It really is. It's it's just... I mean, it depends on, like, really what you're comfortable with. Like, are you okay with people seeing your boobs? Yes? No. Are you okay with busting it open for the internet? <laughs> yes? No. <laughs> For some people's brands, it works. I think it works for Tana's. I think it works for Safari's brand. Did you know his wife is also on it? She is? Yeah. Is she making videos? I don't know if she's making videos, but I definitely know that they both started OnlyFans, and that's their thing. They're like an OnlyFans couple. 
Oh, are they going to be making videos together? Shit, they might be. Not yet. Or I'll, wow. I would have heard about it if they were already That's making videos, but. Might be worth watching. <laughs> Erica Menon Safari sex tape coming soon. I'm down. <laughs> like, there, yeah, I could see that. Interesting. I just, it, the, the, <laughs> the step from like sexy photos on Instagram to porn is just so interesting. Like, what happens? It's like when Mimi from um, Love and Hip Hop, mm-hmm. my uh, Atlanta, did the video um, with her boyfriend at the time Mm -hmm. it was like you know like what what is the you know she she's gone on and done other Mm -hmm. things and she's still on the show and she's fine and she's she's seemingly thriving but it's like why do porn i i just i don't know mentally not from like a place of like shame or anything like if you want to do it do it Mm -hmm. more power to you but it's just like a we it's it's an interesting step for me (laughs) mentally it seems like a leap but if you think about it it's really not because if you're a celebrity you're well known you know there are people out there that want to see you naked every time a celebrity sex tape leaks everyone watches it oh yeah so it seems like a leap but really and truly why not just do it and monetize it it's not that much of a leap like, I, guess I would not. pay to see Brad Pitt. I would pay to see, like, some of these people just out of curiosity because we love them. True. Right? I mean, I guess. It's just, it's, I again, it's just, I think that to do that takes a very specific kind of person. And it's just, I, I don't know. I think society is going to start viewing sex and differently. explicit content differently after For this. sure. This but is going to be like an evolution of like what is deemed appropriate and like, you know. Yeah, and as a celebrity, like what you're allowed to do and what people expect you to do and what's okay and what's not okay. Because 10 years ago, like a celebrity selling naked pictures is like, whoa, we don't agree with that. But now it's like, hey, we're here for it. Yeah. You'd want your image to But be these are not like A list celebrities. Not A list for sure, but these are very like yeah. these are people that have have taken their lives and like in some way exploited them, mm-hmm. you know? I think in many ways <clears throat> excuse me, in many ways people that do YouTube influencers and um reality TV stars they're not celebrities in the sense of like a movie star a movie star that doesn't have a youtube channel that doesn't who isn't trying to be here there and everywhere and exploit mm-hmm. every detail of their life for public consumption yeah you know they're doing a job they're acting they're singing as a result of that they are celebrities but i don't think their lives are for for up for public consumption in the same way that reality people and you know these kind of new sort of celebrities Celebrities, yeah do you know every part of these new kind of celebrities is up for grabs they've signed up for it and so it it makes sense that the next evolution of that is their body Mm -hmm. in every way very interesting very interesting but it's definitely a shift because like i guess the 10 years ago thing isn't relevant for these new celebrities a three year ago thing or like a five year ago thing was definitely that these influencers had to have squeaky clean images and Mm. now we're definitely moving away from that for sure depends on the kind of influencer though depends if you have like an audience of kids probably not no like mommy bloggers are not doing this oh of course not yeah so Hmm. interesting okay well that's the tea That is all we have for you guys today. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the TV and Tea podcast. Yes, make sure you subscribe to our show and leave us a rating and review if you feel so inclined. Mm-hmm. You know, tell us nice things. Only if it's nice. Y'all know the drill. <laughs> for sure. And follow us on Instagram and Twitter at TV and Tea podcast. And that's it. We will see you next week. Thank you so much for listening. Bye, guys. Bye.